welcome to Catalan News. Catalan police do not want to add more fuel to the fire. Today, the chief of the Mossos de Squadra warned Spain that they will be very careful on Sunday in order to avoid civil unrest. The prosecution has ordered Catalan agents to seal off polling stations, but civil society is organising itself to guarantee that they are open and that people can vote. Spain, however, keeps warning that the referendum is illegal and that it will be stopped. We have all the details here at Catalan News. Let's begin. Citizens will not make it easy for police agents to seal off schools and other buildings that are to be used as polling stations on Sunday's referendum. Teachers' unions, parents' associations and cultural groups have joined forces to occupy schools or gather in front of buildings to avoid them being closed. Police say it will always act with proportionality, but the prosecution has been very clear. Any child in a pro-referendum protest is being put at risk. The Catalan educational community is taking very real steps to ensure that voters will be able to cast their ballot on October the 1st. A new website was launched today to organise volunteers to prevent schools used as polling stations from being closed on Sunday. So far, more than 10,000 people have registered. Davant de, de, de una, de una, de una fiscalia, d'una voluntat d'una fiscalia que vol impedir que els col·legis eh, aquell dia o s'obrin amb normalitat, nosaltres fem una crida a mobilitzar-nos d'una manera pacífica, festiva, massiva, davant dels col·legis per garantir que el diumenge es pugui exercir els nostres drets. Catalan Police has raised concerns over orders from the public prosecutor to seal off polling stations and identify people who attempt to vote. They warn it could lead to problems of public order. Orders will be followed, say the police, but with a sense of proportion and appropriateness. The question now is what will the Catalan police do if groups of people peacefully try to prevent them from closing schools on Friday afternoon? The Catalan government admitted today that it cannot ensure all polling stations will be open, yet it still insists that the vote will go ahead. Opposition parties, though, continue to warn the Catalan government not only of the illegalities they say it is committing, but also of those they may force public workers to commit per part del govern de la Generalitat que està vulnerant l'estatut d'autonomia, vulnerant el reglament del Parlament, vulnerant els drets dels ciutadans i les ciutadanes representades a l'oposició i vulnerant el dret dels funcionaris a no rebre cap pressió. The Catalan government continues to insist that no public workers will be forced to break the law, although very few details have been provided. All the secrecy, however, will soon be revealed. Despite the criticisms, the Catalan government is determined to hold the vote and keep it peaceful. After finding out the prosecution's orders to the police, the Catalan president called a joint coordination security meeting with Spanish officials. Madrid agreed and it will take part in order to make sure the law is enforced. The last such meeting took place in July after an eight-year gap. No one knows what will happen on Sunday in Catalonia, nor where the Catalans will be able to vote or not. But what is very clear is that the world is watching. From Brussels to Washington, international leaders have been urged to take a stance, while Spain is trying to get Trump and others to defend the Constitution. Pro-independence leaders ask for protection for what they see as an increasing repression against them. The debate is getting more and more heated as this Sunday approaches. A lot of people have their say on what's happening in Catalonia, and among them the Catalan Parliament President. While receiving the Capitres Award in Brussels, she criticized the latest actions from Spain to stop the referendum. And we understand that there is not real democracy if we are prevented from exercising fundamental rights and freedoms. When peaceful and democratic ideas are being criminally prosecuted. The debate is so intense that it's spread outside the Spanish borders in the past few hours. Indeed, what's happening in Catalonia has reached the White House. After a meeting with his Spanish counterpart, the U.S. president talked about Catalonia. Yet, he might have disappointed Madrid, as he didn't reject the October 1st vote. The only thing he made clear was that he would vote no in a referendum if he had the chance. I've been watching that unfold, but it's actually been unfolding for centuries. And I think that uh, nobody knows if they're going to have a vote. I think the president would say they're not going to have a vote. But I think that the people would be uh, very much opposed to that. I can say, only speaking for myself, I would like to see Spain continue to be united. Activist and WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange spoke out against the latest Spanish actions. He even said that these events are leading Spain to a China-style censorship. The Green Party in the European Parliament asked the Commission to take action before October 1st in order to promote dialogue. And the Norwegian Socialist Left Party believes that Spain is using authoritarian means to stop the vote. You say that I say nothing. 
While the European Commission is still avoiding the issue, pro-independence Esquerra Party is aiming for another supranational entity, the European Court of Human Rights. The party thinks that last week's arrests violate fundamental rights. In fact, we are facing now in Barcelona a de facto state of emergency, uh, which is affecting you know, uh, rights to assembly, uh, freedom of speech, um, uh, press rights. The lawyer also said that similar procedures will be launched this week in the same European High Court. We can speak now with the co-leader of the Greens in the European Parliament, Philippe Lamberts, who today sent a letter to the European Commission asking it to mediate between Catalonia and Spain. Mr Lamberts, thank you for joining us. Why did you decide to write to the European Commission? Because we are worried. We are worried when we see the total impasse now between uh, the Catalonian government and the central government in Spain. And we are, are worried that uh, this will lead to more tensions in the country. And I think that this is not conform to the uh, uh, European spirit, which is unity in diversity, uh, but that uh, supposes dialogue. And uh, since there's no dialogue at the moment, if the European Union institutions can facilitate the resumption of dialogue, then maybe we can get to a political solution which is really needed, uh, whatever it is. Uh, personally, I'm more in favor of a federal solution for Spain, but then again, we need a political dialogue. So far, the EU has not been very willing to get involved. Do you expect a positive response? No, and I can also understand the sensitivities uh, in Spain about this. So even if the answer happens behind the scenes, I would be happy as long as we try to facilitate the resumption of dialogue. If the, again, if the action is not visible but produces an effect, I'm happy. I don't need uh, to see uh, a lot of grandstanding or posturing by the European institutions. What I hope is that they can facilitate stuff. You say in your letter that fundamental values are being put at risk, but the Commission said yesterday that everything is happening according to the Spanish law, based on decisions made by Spanish judges. Well, I believe that it's a matter of proportionality. One of the key principles in democracy is proportionality between what you do and the, the stated goal. And to be honest, uh, I can understand, uh, uh, well, reluctance by some, and, and frankly I have mine, about the way the Catalan government has gone about uh, trying to do this referendum, the way the law was passed in the Catalan Parliament was not really uh, uh, well very encouraging to me. But then again, the reaction of the central government with arresting uh, uh, high civil servants, etc., appears at least from a distance to be quite disproportionate and, and therefore uh, conducive to more tensions rather than to appease them. And therefore, again, what we need is the tension to go down so that people can talk with one another again. Something needs to be done between Spain and Catalonia. And if we want to live together, well, we need to discuss. You know, I'm Belgian and it's quite obvious that we have all differences between Flemish and French speakers in Belgium. And of course, as French speakers, for years we've been in denial mode and said, OK, we don't want to discuss anything. But it takes two to tango. If we want to keep living together, we have to discuss. And discuss means also give and take and make concessions to one another. That's the price of living together. And by the way, that's the basics of the European Union. That's how it works. And I've seen too little of that in, in Spain. That will to dialogue, to compromise, to give and take. And, and this is what I hope we can reinstate in the country. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamberts. Let's stay with Brussels now, because other MEPs have shown today their concern about the ongoing tensions between Madrid and Barcelona and have urged restraint. The Catalan's response is very peaceful, is non-aggressive. But I'm wondering, indeed, what may happen in the following days. It's uh, such a displace of forces to intimidate, to scare the population. How can you take? You had in, in the streets hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions. It's, it's, it's just shocking to see that uh, nobody's reacting here in this bubble. Uh, the European Commission is very silent. All the commissioners that are very outspoken when European values are at stake, let it be in Poland or in Hungary. While European politicians try to warn against the risks of the current stalemate between Catalonia and Spain, here trade unions are also being mobilised against what they see as a fundamental threat to democracy. 
One of the main trade unions, Comisión Obreras, has criticised the Spanish government for not taking any political decision and trying to solve a political problem with judges and police. While CGT, another trade union, went a step further and urged all workers to take part in a general strike on October 3rd. In fact, students have already started to strike, with universities expected to be affected from tomorrow. And with this, we finish for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more on what's going on in Catalonia. But before that, we leave you with a commercial for this year's Barcelona Erotic Fair. Even this has been influenced by Catalonia's current political situation, like many things these days. Goodbye. La Guardia Civil ha detenido a 12 personas, entre ellas altos cargos del gobierno catalán, y está practicando registros en los departamentos de Economía, Exteriores, Trabajo y Gobernación. Cuando la censura y la represión se convierten en norma, habría que plantearse qué es lo normal. Normal no es pretender que encajemos todos en un mismo patrón o juzgar a quienes se suponen diferentes. Normal es que podamos decidir qué queremos ser.